Praise the Lord. Thank you for that, McDonald. Yo, McDonald was a good student after we had sorted him out. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so it's great to be with you all. All of you watching online, I hope you not taking too many coffee breaks. Don't fall asleep because God is up to something. And I always say, some people say, God's doing nothing. I'll say, no, the problem is you where nothing is happening. So you get where God is doing things, where God is moving, and things are happening, and God is alive and well and doing things on planet Earth. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sure. So he's right here with us this morning, <clears throat> and he's going to do something. You know, Something good is about to happen, or is happening. Do you... Do you agree with me? You guys online, you know, please connect with us. Make sure you say amen to this. And if you disagree, say so, so I can call you afterwards and sort you out. Okay. <laughs> because we need to get agreement because the Bible says where two or more agree, that's where God is in the midst of the whole situation. So I'm going to be speaking a little bit about faith on fire. Okay. So now I'm going to get excited. I just know that because I get excited. You know. I remember, or if you're watching the Springbok soccer team playing, or the, the rugby team playing, or the whatever you're watching, you know, and you, you support somebody, isn't it? Even when you watch Wimbledon, somehow when you watch, doesn't matter who you're watching, the women's or the men's, you kind of get captured by one of the players, and you support them. And then, aren't you so excited when they win? Oh, you walk around with a smile. You go and you even get in your car and go and buy a coffee. And you're so happy you're walking around. Hey, how's it? How's it? And all your friends say, why are you so happy? Well, your team won or your per somebody. So you're in the winning team. And you're so excited about that. I used to get excited when I played sport and I scored a goal or something. I would do a somersault and a flick flack on the field. Yeah, I could do that. Could still now, you know. But the microphone hinders me, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> so I have to keep calm. But you get so excited about some things. But when it comes to the Lord, then you get all subdued. You get all mellow. And you get all funeral-like. Like, what's the problem? I often like to look at the life of Jesus. And I was just imagining if I was walking around with Jesus. And you got no food. And he just made thousands of loaves of food and fish. You know? And everyone's eating. Miracle after miracle happened wherever Jesus went. You know, stuff was happening on a daily basis, not just in the morning. In the morning, at 10 o'clock, at 11 o'clock, at 12 o'clock, at 1 o'clock. All the time stuff was happening, even when they got inside a boat. You couldn't do anything with Jesus without something happening. You get in a boat, Jesus goes to sleep, and the storm's coming, and stuff is happening again. So there's always things happening when you're following Jesus. So it's a good idea to follow Jesus. You know? But you need to put your faith in Jesus to follow Jesus. So I'm going to read some scriptures quickly because I always get accused of, where's your scripture? So I'm going to give you eight scriptures, then I'll carry on. Okay. <laughs> Hebrews 11 verse 1, it says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay, so you can't go to Checkers, OK, Macro, or anywhere else and get faith. It doesn't, it's not available anywhere, but in the church of God, by the people of God, and by the word of God, and by knowing Jesus, that's where faith comes from. You can't buy it anywhere, and it comes like that. Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So as a Christian person, if you want to be a person who pleases God, you've got to have faith. And how are you going to get faith? Well, you don't just want mediocre faith. I'm talking about you want fire faith. You want your faith to be on fire. And people will say to you, what's wrong with you? You're crazy. Rather be crazy in fire faith for God than be overexcited about a rugby team because they win and lose. Jesus only ever wins. So get into the winning team and, well, you'll have challenges and I'll speak about those now. Okay. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Okay. So you've got to hear God's stuff to get faith. 
So you can't read the newspapers, you can't watch the TV, you can't go to concerts and all that stuff if you like music, whatever. You can go and listen to Beethoven and go to all these great concerts. That will not increase your faith. It's the Word of God and being with the people of God that increases your faith. So those guys at home there, we hope to see you soon. Come and mix with us. The Bible says, do not neglect the gathering of yourselves together as a manner of some. You see, it's like if you get married, okay, and your wife lives in Canada and you live in South Africa, now you're married. Well, you'll never have children, will you? It's not going to happen. At least somebody agrees with me. It's not going to happen. <laughs> you see? You're never going to actually feel a real physical hug. Because you're never going to get, it's not going to happen. Something's going to be missing in that marriage. And it's the same as if you're a Christian and you're not in fellowship with Christians. The Word of God, the anointing power of God cannot work there properly. Because you're not where you're supposed to be. So you have to mix. Jesus was never ever found alone unless he was praying. Otherwise, he was with multitudes of people. He was with the sinners. He was with the sick people. He was always involved with people. You cannot be a Jesus follower without being around people. Can't be a hermit and go live on the on an island somewhere out there. Buy your own island. Go live in the Mediterranean and live on your little island. Just you and they fly the food in and say, I'm going to follow Jesus. He's going to come and speak to you and say, get off this island. You're in the wrong place right now. Okay, Ephesians 6.16 6, says, The shield of faith, you need to have a shield of faith around you. It'll quench the fiery darts of the enemy. You see, faith is so important. Mark 11.22 says, Jesus speaking to them, and he challenges them, and he says, Have faith in God. You know? Some people say, well, Jesus was just another man. Well, he was the most influential person that has ever touched this planet. And will ever touch this planet. So, and if he said, have faith in God, I think everybody needs to wake up and listen to the one who knew and the one who said, have faith in God. So never be embarrassed of serving and following Jesus Christ. Because that's the best thing. That's what we are created to do. That's how you fulfill your life. First step is have faith in God. You. And some people say, oh, you believe in that Jesus stuff. Absolutely. If you don't, there's something wrong with you. Go see the psychiatrist. I don't need to. I'm following Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 8 verse 10. Even Jesus, when some of the centurion came to him, he commented and he said, I have not found somebody with so great a faith in all the land of Israel. I hope you and I, and those of you online watching, you're going to say, I want to be like that guy. I want God to look down and say, I have not found faith, so much faith like that one. Is he going to say that about you? Right. I'm talking about faith on fire. Now I'm going to use the analogy of fire here to just show you something. And the Holy Spirit, I've already prayed lots the whole week about this message. And I'm saying, Lord, help your people because there's something that will stop the fire. And there's something that will let the fire go cuckoo, for want of a better word. It'll blaze like crazy. You know? And you don't want to be those that you, you got faith. But you've got no fire. Your faith is not on fire. Why not? As I'm speaking now, I'm going to tell you a few things. And the Holy Spirit's going to show you, some of you, He's going to show you right now. Some of you online, He's going to show you, He's going to say, that you need to deal with. It's killing your faith. Your faith is mediocre because, and it can't catch a light because of these problems. Now, you see, when you have a look at a fire, what stops a fire? from burning. What stops you from having a fire? Well, no oxygen. I'll tell you a story. When I worked in the United Kingdom, the one day I decided, I'm going to have a bra. You know? But I have no equipment. It's fine. I'll get the rocks. So I went into the back garden and I put the rocks there and I got the, the newspaper and then I broke the little sticks and I, I've made hundreds of fires in Africa. It's easy. You make a fire on the... F You've got to be careful in Africa. You, you know? Oh, should I tell you this story? When I was 12 or 13 years old, 
my friend and I were sitting in the drain. I won't tell you where in case they're still looking for me. You know? <laughs> and and we, we decided to make a little fire. And by mistake, the fire touched the grass. And before we knew it, the whole world was on fire. The fire engines were coming. I was famous in the local newspapers for setting the whole place on fire. They just didn't know who did it. And I wasn't telling. And my friend and I, we were petrified. We said, you tell, I'll kill you. You tell, I'll kill you too. <laughs> and it was in the newspaper. Some people even, I think, we, we kept the piece of that newspaper, but somehow it got lost, you know. Some vandals set this place on fire, you know. Fortunately, it was between two highways, but the whole place was burnt to smithereens. The black mambas, the wrinkles, the snakes, the mongoose, every single thing ran for their life. There was nothing left but charcoal. You know, I set it on fire. Oosh. It was a prophetic word about my life coming to pass later. You know. But when I was in England, I was trying to make a fire. You know. And I put my stuff there and I lit my fire and my fire just went out. And I, I tried again and again and I could not. I ended up taking my meat and cooking it in the house on the stove. And it's like, I was so disappointed and so frustrated because in Africa, I just make a fire. Gee, I've got to be careful. I'll set the whole place on fire. <laughs> now, I said, what is the problem here? Then I found out the problem. You know, the first thing was the ground is freezing. It's minus four or something. Cold and ice stop your fire. You see? If you're not on fire, you're too cold and too icy. Wet. The ground was also wet. Now in Africa, if the ground's wet, you make fire and you'll dry the ground, fire and all. You know? Not there in England. So it was cold, it was wet, and it was icy. That's what kills your fire. As I'm speaking now, the Holy Spirit's saying, yeah, you know this. Now how, how do you relate that? You, know? you can relate it with fear. Maybe fear is like us. It just kills your faith. You have faith or you have fear. Fear of whatever. Right now, a lot of people have fear of dying. I was 35 and I actually said, Lord, take me home now. I'm done with this world. I don't need all this junk. I don't need to pray for cars and fix cars. I don't need to build. A just take me home. And Jesus says, no, I won't. You've got work to do for me. <laughs> I said, yeah, but that's... You know, I've got a wife, I've got children. You can take care of them. He said he'll be the husband to the widow and whatever. You know, so just take me home. <laughs> the Bible says absent from the body to be, I can't wait to get home. I've warned everybody. I said, don't anyone cry. Don't do anything negative. When I leave, throw the biggest party ever because I'm going to be dancing better than Amy and her sister and anyone else. I'll be somersaulting. I'll be partying because I'll be where I'm aiming to go. You can't fear me, uh, frighten me or put fear in me of death. That's where I'm heading to. Every single one of us, our body's going to pack up. we got to give up this body at some time. Well, I was already ready. When I, when I read the revelation, when I understood, you see, hearing the word of God put my faith on another level, where I said, I'm ready to leave. He said, you're going nowhere. You're going to work. And I've got some, some of my adopted daughters and that. They say they're praying, I'm going to live over 90. I said, ah, what are you doing to me? <laughs> giving me more work, you know, you see, but fear kills your faith, doubt, is doubt like water, what causes you to doubt, you know? unbelief, why, what is happening, and sometimes we get a wrong perspective, and I'll throw this in here now, have you ever prayed for somebody, and they didn't get healed, why should that bother your faith in God, you're not God, I'm not God, I can't heal anybody. I can believe he will heal. But I can't heal. So I believe, I personally believe God can heal anyone of anything, anytime. When he doesn't, it's not my problem. It doesn't affect my faith in him. Oh yes, it's very, very exciting. I've witnessed somebody that's dead come alive. 
I've witnessed unbelievable miracles of healing before my very eyes. I've seen people, oh, do you want to see a miracle? Well, who are you praying for? You see, you'll never see someone healed if you never pray for someone who's sick. And you'll never pray for someone who's sick if your faith is flat. Because you think, what happens if I pray for them and nothing happens? Nothing happens. That's what happens. It doesn't have to affect your faith. Why do you allow it to affect your faith? Take all the scriptures, some of them I've quoted, and there's so many of them. Don't allow stuff to affect your faith, but you want your faith to be on fire, not put out. Okay? What about, how do you put out a fire? Well, if, if you know, we had a fire inspection the other day, you better have your fire extinguisher. Oh, have some of us got a fire extinguisher on our faith? Maybe that's the newspaper. Maybe that's the signs of the times and stuff going on around you. It's like a fire extinguisher. As you say, I'm going to trust God for a job. The newspaper says there's no work in South Africa. There's another 4,000 unemployed. The economy is going down. Listen, I have just helped place a young white male boy in a new job. That When he came to me, he said, Look, I don't know if I'll ever get a job. I'm the wrong color in the wrong country and nobody's got work. Well, he just got a job. Because I believe, you see. You need work. Come and see me and let's believe together because the Bible says we two or more agree. But don't come to me and say, please pray for me, but you, you are so full of doubt and unbelief. You're like an ass block. And now you're going to believe it's not going to work too well for you. But God can give you jobs in the midst of no jobs available. Yeah. That's the God that I know. Okay. So the fire extinguisher can put out that fire. What is it that can be that in your life? What about, you know, when somebody's on fire? If you do firefighting and you'll see, if anything catches on fire, you've got to put a blanket on it, isn't it? Pastor Joseph said, you, oxygen, no oxygen, no fire. So how do you stop the oxygen? You, you smother it. Is something smothering you? Is there unforgiveness? Is there something smothering the fire? One of the greatest smotherers and killers of our faith is sin. When you do something wrong, ah, oh, but be free. Every single human being has done something wrong. You are not alone. The Bible says we are all sinners saved by the grace of God. So now when you are a Christian and you do something wrong, repent quickly so your faith is not smothered. And then you're going with, your, you want your faith on fire, isn't it? Hallelujah. Oh, la la. Okay, I'm going to move on to what starts a fire? <laughs> what starts that fire? Hmm? You don't need a Lebanon bomb to start a fire. The tiniest little spark starts a fire. One little matchstick, a matchstick so small. I remember my friend and I, when we lit that little fire, it was about this size, and we struck the match. Boy, you should have seen that fire. It was hundred, maybe a hundred meters in the air. The whole place, everybody knew there was a big fire in that town. <laughs> you could see it from miles around. But what started it? It started small. You see. Right now, maybe you online, maybe you are saying, I want that fire. Well, I'm telling you, we're going to, when I close in prayer, if you don't have fire and you want fire, your fire is going to be sparked. Some people are nodding with me. I hope you're ready for it. Eh? Right? What starts that fire? What keeps the fire going? You know, you be careful with fire. Now, faith fire is awesome. When I was a little guy, also around 12, you, you must say, you, I must have been a hectic kid. Eh? Afterwards, I went to my mother when I was about 25. I said, I'm so sorry, mom. I gave you such a hard time, you know. It was after I got saved because I, I read in the Bible, you know, where the Bible says, like, 
Children, obey your parents in the Lord and all will go well with you. I said, you, I better go repent, you know. Go and tell my parents I'm sorry. I was such a hectic kid, you know. Wasn't so bad, you know. <laughs> my mother still loved me, you know. But what keeps that fire going? I remember once we were making a little fire and then you know your kids and you, you don't know what you're doing. It's nice to not know what you're doing. It's okay in the kingdom of God. But I remember getting a little tin, filling it with petrol and going to the fire over there and saying, let's make this fire bigger. <laughs> and I threw the petrol on the fire. Guess what happened? The fire came up that liquid, it hit the tin in my hand, blew it right out my hand. Fortunately, I didn't burn me. I felt the heat on my fingers as the tin burst out of my hand and there was fire there and where the fire was, it had run all the way and run into the tin I was holding in my hand. And then I learned, don't play with fire. Petrol and fire, dangerous thing. But what, what lights that fire? Well, maybe petrol on your faith to get it into the fire realm is to do something that you've never done before. And I'm not talking about go and rob a bank with a magnum, you know, <laughs> or do anything wrong. Go and pray for somebody. Just the other day, I took my vehicle in for a service. I, 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 I love opportunities. Sometimes it's frustrating. Do what God has called you to do. The Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Do you know that nobody on planet earth is going to get saved unless Christians tell them? Do you know that nobody's going to get miraculously healed by Jesus unless a Jesus believer touches them and prays for them? It's not going to happen. Do you know nobody can get a word of wisdom and knowledge? The, the gifts of the Spirit cannot touch the humanity on this planet unless the Christian people that have that ability operate and do it. It won't happen. No, you should be excited. You should say, just stop right there. I'm getting out of here. I've got stuff to do. But as I take my vehicle to the service, the man there, he says to me, I oh, know I'm in pain. And I said, okay, you're in pain. Do you believe in Jesus? That's what I said. I, I, I didn't know what he would say. He said, yes. I said, great. I put my hand on his shoulder. Sorry, COVID rules. You know? But Jesus rules. <laughs> the, Bible's, the Bible says, let the anointed lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You can't lay hands if it's against the law. Well, God's law says I must lay hands. So I laid hands on the man and I prayed for him. I'm, I'm at a service center. You, know? you don't do that. We're supposed to do that. No, church is where you are. You are the church. Wherever you are, doesn't matter if you're in the supermarket, whether you're shopping, wherever you are, the church is there. Jesus is there with you. Take the opportunity. Don't let it go past. I want to encourage you. You don't know what can happen. I remember in my life, I've, I've done craziest things. I prayed for a businessman one, once. His wife said to me, please pray for my husband. She's not saved. I said, Where does he, where's his room? I went and lay on his bed. I said, just make sure you're not at home so he doesn't think there's something fishy going on. Yeah? You know? And I lay on his bed where he slept and I prayed that God would take him into the kingdom and use his resources for the kingdom of God. And I, I just won't tell you the name of the person, but they brought the ministry into South Africa. They got radically saved. But I prayed, I believed. Do you understand what I'm saying? I believed. I cannot do it. God can do it. I actually went off. I was working in the United Kingdom. Five years later, one of my pastor's friends phoned me up and he said, do you know something? I said, what? What are you talking about? He said, oh, come and see me. I want to tell you something. And he told me that guy got saved. And he brought a massive ministry into South Africa, Christian ministry. And he's using his resources for the kingdom of God. You see, God can do it. But I could have also said, oh, well, I'm nobody. You know? With, without Jesus, I'm nobody. With Jesus, I'm somebody. With Jesus, you're somebody. And Jesus is no respecter of persons. He's not going to use me because of my good looks and my long hair. You see? And sometimes we think it's all about what, 
what gifting we have, what degrees we have, how smart we have, what we look like or whatever. It's got nothing to do with that. It's your availability and your obedience to the Word of God that brings the results in your life. Now, what puts that petrol when you operate in faith? And I'm sharing you testimonies. I've got so many testimonies. I think I could stand on a platform and share testimonies for maybe a month. And I will have to sleep in between because I'll get exhausted. Because I've got thousands of testimonies. That's no exaggeration. Thousands of testimonies. And I continually say, I do not want to live in the testimonies. I don't want to come here and tell you something that happened 10 years ago. 20 years ago. I want, I'm believing God for a testimony today. I'm believing God for a testimony on Monday, this week. I'm believing God's stuff is going to happen. What? So maybe provision, maybe jobs, maybe healing, maybe a word. You know, it's, it's an interesting thing as you serve God, as you say, Jesus, have my life. Sometimes once I was driving my car and I'm in a hurry. Have you ever been in a hurry? You know, I've got things to do. I've got places to go. I'm in a hurry. So I stopped at this one uh, garage and I run into the bathroom. I'm in a hurry. I park, I jump out, I just need the bathroom. So I run in. And as I'm running in, the Holy Spirit says, speak to that couple over there. I say, no, I don't have time. You see? And I nearly missed it. And as I'm coming back, to, you know, the whole conversation starts where Jesus says, did you give me my life? I said, of course you know I did, you know. Are you going to serve me or, or are you going to listen to me? or listen? You know I will listen to you, Lord. He says, go speak to that couple. I don't have time. I'm in a hurry. Don't you understand? <laughs> Jesus, don't you understand? I'm in a hurry. He says, go speak to that couple. And he gives me a word for them. You know? And I don't do that. I'm not like Pastor Joseph. I don't do that. That's not what I do. But at that moment, Jesus says, do this. So I did it. Wow. It was phenomenal. It's one of my testimonies. You see? I just, I said, I don't know what, I pulled a, a Moses on, on the Lord. I pulled everything I could on. I don't know what to say. I'm not very good at speaking. And this is very inappropriate. They're sitting down. I'm going to cause a riot in the place. You know? I made all the excuses. And the word came. Will you obey me or do your own thing? I said, ah, oh, Lord. And reluctantly, with an attitude, I can actually say, even with a bad attitude, God can use you if you obey. You see? And with a bad attitude, I went and I spoke to them. I didn't know what to say. I said, uh, I felt like an idiot. I said, excuse me, would you mind if I spoke to you? And they're like, you, uh, like can't you see we're eating? What do you want? Kind of, you know, like, this is stupid. By the time I finished, they were both in tears. I was praying for them, and the Holy Ghost had moved all over the place. By the time I didn't walk on the pavement to my car, I was walking in the air. You see, your faith will be on fire when you just choose to obey God no matter what is going on. Just obey Him. And sometimes you say something to somebody, and they, they might even swear at you or whatever. You do not know the results of w walking in faith, it's like that fire. When you watch them on TV, I watch sometimes, and they're trying to put out a fire, and that fire is just going all over the place, and they bring helicopters with water, and water cannons, and I mean, the, you put a fire break there. Ah, oh, when the wind and the fire blow, nothing can stop the fire of God. You see, the fire of God is obeying and walking by faith in His Word and what He says. The wind is the Holy Ghost moving and carrying on wherever He wants to go. And nothing's going to stop the fire of God from happening. And so I want to encourage you this morning, you know, and don't allow the enemy to quench your fire. Maybe... Your, your fire's been quenched by something negative. Negative things happen all the time. You know? Stuff happens in life. But don't allow that to rob you of your faith. Don't allow that to rob you of the life that God expects you to have. 
Even in the Bible, it says that one day we'll stand before him and God will say, well done, my good and faithful. Faithful in what? In sitting in the coffee shop, drinking coffee every day. No, faithful in living the life of faith. As Jesus said, have faith in God. Put your trust in God. Move and do. It's not always easy. I know what he says it's easy. But wow, it's a beautiful, awesome thing to run your life, live your life in God and having that fire faith. And it's not like weird, although it seems and feels weird sometimes. But it's not some, you don't become a weirdo, don't worry. In fact, people will come after you and say, please talk to me. Please pray for me. Stuff will open up for you. You see, but we're living in this world where there's so much doubt, there's so much unbelief, there's so much negativity. Everything is trying to put out the fire faith. Never mind the fire faith, the ordinary faith in the Christian people. Don't let that happen to you. You know, you have the power and the ability to speak life. Ephesians 4.24 says speak life. That's faith in operation. Speaking life. Calling things that are, that don't seem to be when you're looking at them. And so I really want to encourage you to do that. And I'm going to close in prayer now. But let me read Hebrews 11.33. And it says, through faith, they subdued kingdoms. Hallelujah. Oh, which kingdom's going to stand against us? Come on, kingdom of God, darkness, come here. We will subdue you. You know? Satan, you want to come and attack us? Watch out. We will flatten you. Because we're in the kingdom and we have the power of God in our hands. You know, when you get up in the morning, guess what? You, I don't know if you have this revelation. When you open your eyes and wake up and say, I'm awake today, the devil says, oh no, not another one. <laughs> mucking up my plans to destroy humanity. You see, When you go wherever you go, the devil's backing off saying, hang on, hang on, hang on. What are they up to now? No. When you decide... I think I'm going to tell that person about Jesus. The devil says, oh no, oh no, oh no. I might lose another soul. You see, you subdue the kingdom of darkness. It's got no power against the kingdom of light. You know, you work righteousness. That's what you do. That's what you're called to do. Work righteousness in this world. You obtain the promises of God. You, and there's so many I can't go through them. But you obtain the promises of God. Ha, huh. yes, thank you, Jesus. You even stop the mouths of the lions. Huh. You see, the Bible says he goes around like a roaring lion. He's making a big noise, isn't he? Huh. Will you just stop his mouth as well? So I want to encourage you this morning. You and I and you online over there. You are called of God. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. He has a plan for you not to live with ordinary faith, but to live your life in a faith filled of fire and do great and mighty things and exploits in His name. Let's pray together. Father, we praise You. We thank You. You called us. You anointed us to be Your sons and daughters young and old in this world and you asked us to live by faith you called upon us and said it's faith that will please you and so father this morning i pray that all those watching and listening online all those in the auditorium today from the youngest to the oldest without exception will their faith will arise Holy Spirit, we invite you to prompt us, to challenge us, to rearrange us, and let us be, as your word says, the people of faith. 
not ashamed, but doing what you've called us to do in our lives. We bless you, we praise you, and we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. And before I go, I just want to encourage those of you online, if you can get to church, it's a good place to be. Because there's some people that are here that I want to pray for. And and there's some people I even, God gave me a word for. So when you come together as your manner of some, all kinds of good things happen for you. And so don't neglect that, but be here and be there and be where you're supposed to be. And do what we should do. In Jesus' name. Amen.